Hello and welcome to Alexpo and today we're talking about Ralph Rangnick. The German is going to be the man to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Old Trafford. He's going to be getting an interim contract, he's going to be the manager until the end of the season. But is he the right man to steady the Man United ship? Well, as expected, I'm going to let Football Manager 2022 tell us what's going to happen. I've made Ralph Rangnick the Man United manager just until the end of the season. Once we get to the end of the first season, he will leave the club. Well, he's meant to be becoming a consultant of sorts, but Man United will be getting a new manager. But how will Ralph Rangnick get on as Man United manager? I'm James from Alexpo. Let's dive into this simulation and let's see exactly what's going to happen. Okay, here we are at the start of the simulation and as you can see, Ralph Ragnick is the new Man United manager. Obviously, in reality, he's only going to have about half a season. In this experiment, he's got the full campaign because I didn't think it was worth going halfway into the season because the simulation wouldn't be reflective of where Man United actually are in the table. I mean, we're not even halfway through the season yet, are we? Anyway, here we are, Ralph Ragnick, he's got a contract until 2022, one season as Man United manager. His tactical style, the Gegenpress, press, of course, preferred formation, 4-4-2, how will that suit Man United's players? But if you look at this, tactically so switched on, technically great, attack and football, it's what Man United fans want to see. And he's got to work with youngsters, which is not very good for Cristiano Ronaldo because he's quite old nowadays. But that doesn't matter. Can Ralph Ragnar get a tune out of what is quite a star-studded Man United squad? Let's simulate a year into the future, let's see how he gets on at Old Trafford. Right here we are at the end of Ralph Ragnick's one and only season as Man United manager and he hasn't been too far away from delivering the Premier League title. It's been an exceptional season for the Red Devils who have finished second four points behind the winners Liverpool. They came ahead of City, Arsenal, Chelsea, I mean everyone else that isn't called Liverpool. It's been a great season for the Red Devils managed by Ralph Ragnick, but more important than that, Chris Wood, 18 goals, third in the Golden Boot Race, you love to see it. Best players in the division though, Jadon Sancho and Ronaldo, just finishing behind Mo Salah, assists Bruno Fernandes more than anyone, Jadon Sancho getting 11 assists as well, it looks like Jadon Sancho has had an excellent season, 7 player of the match awards as well, for the expensive, expensive summer signing, he hasn't really hit the heights just yet, he's starting to now, he's scored a couple of goals could become a big player under Ralph Ragnick. But let's look at Man United in a bit more detail. Have they won any cups? Obviously Ragnick is going to be leaving at the end of this contract. I said it so he wouldn't be getting a new deal. He's going to be leaving. In 18 days, he'll be away. Then Man United will have to find a new manager. He's content with things overall and he's happy with the team's recent performance. So he should be Ralph. Coming second is pretty damn good. But has he got any silverware? as well. Man United haven't had a lot of silverware in recent years. How's he got on? Well, he hasn't won the League Cup because they were knocked out in the fourth round on penalties by a 10-man Brentford side. Victor Lindelof, Jesse Lingard and David De Gea missing. It was a very long penalty shooter by the looks of things. Elsewhere, how have they got on? They had a wonderful November winning every game without conceding a goal, including wins over Chelsea and Bayern Munich. FA Cup, they've gone quite far by the looks of things. Quarter-finals, where they lost to Newcastle. 2-0 there losing Newcastle, who bought big on Andre Kramaric and Rodrigo Bentenker. Champions League, they made it to the final. What a run it was. They conquered Spain by the looks of things. They made it through their group of Porto, Bayern Munich and Ferenc Varos. Then they played Villarreal, who they're currently playing in the Champions League. They also got beat by them in the Europa League final last season. They beat them 4-0 over two legs. Then they played Barcelona, winning 3-2 over two legs. Semi-final, it was a date with Real Madrid, 3-2 win in the semis, setting up a final with Manchester City, where sadly for Ralph Ragnick, in his final game as Man United manager, they got absolutely battered. And it was quite an interesting team he picked. He had Ahmed Diallo starting, Dean Henderson was in goal, Diogo Dallo at right back. And they just haven't delivered at all. The best player in a Man United shirt was Paul Pogba. And to be honest, even Ahmad Diallo had a good little game despite being a surprise addition to the starting eleven. So a Champions League runners-up medal and second in the Premier League. Things got off to an awful start actually for Ragnick. They lost to Leicester on the opening day, then they were held by Norwich. It was only in the third game when they started to actually win things, beating Newcastle 3-1. But they actually fell behind at Old Trafford. Let's check the players out, see what system we've been playing and who have been the stars. It's been a 4-4-2 formation as we expected. 
and the star player of Man United has been Cristiano Ronaldo. Average rating 7.5, 28 goals, 11 assists, but he's only just been the best player because Jadon Sancho has had an excellent year. 11 goals, 13 assists, 7.46, then you've got Bruno Fernandes, 15 goals, 20 assists. Those three players have been absolute stars. Marcus Rashford's done pretty well as well, only getting 7 goals though, which he's probably a little bit disappointed by. Mason Greenwood, he's been brilliant. 21 goals, 46 starts. He's probably been the main man actually up front by the looks of things. 21 goals, that's an exceptional tally. Edson Cavani, he also got double figures. So it looks like goals haven't been hard to come by for Man United's pressing gig and press side. Pressing gig and press? That doesn't sound right, does it? Let's have a little look at who hasn't featured under Ralph Ragnick, see who hasn't been getting many minutes. We'll go to the bottom. Phil Jones hasn't played, unsurprisingly. Fred, he was loaned out. Jesse Lingard, 32 substitute appearances. And it's no wonder he is leaving on a free in the coming weeks. Juan Mata barely played. He's going to leave. He's joining Werder Bremen. Donny van der Beek, even with the new manager, only one start all season. Victor Lindelof's barely played. Just three starts for him. Alex Tellers can I get in the team? Eric Bailly can't get in the team. And that seems to be about it. Diogo Dallo's played quite a bit of football actually, competing with Aaron Wan-Bissaka as right back. Neither have been exceptional. I'm really surprised at how much Amad Diallo's played. 28 starts, 3 goals and 7 assists. A wonderful example of young players getting a chance and proving themselves under the new manager. But is that going to change next season? Radnick's on his way out. Who is going to replace him? The bookies are saying Pochettino at the minute. But who will football manager predict? Radnick's on his way out in a couple of weeks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate through the summer until Man United appoint a new manager. Who will it be? Let's find out. Okay, here we are, the 26th of July, 2022. Man United have got a new manager. It isn't Pochettino, it is Gabriele Milano, or more commonly known as Max Allegri. He signed a three-year deal, £215,000 a week, leaving Juventus to join Man United. There's been a bit of an exodus as well. Steve Holland's gone, Darren Fletcher's gone, Paolo godino has gone whoever Paolo Godino is, and it looks like big changes are happening at Old Trafford. Obviously Allegri a huge name in world football, but is he going to be the man to restore glory to the old, but is he going to be the man to restore the glory to the Red Devils, they obviously they came second last season under Ragnik, which was exceptional really, they've actually already made some sign-ins, this was in the dying embers of the Ragnik era, they've got Kaiki from Santos, and Alexis Sailmakers from AC Milan. Two good young players. Two very good signings actually. But will they feature under the new manager? This is the problem. I mean they've signed players who the new manager might not want. So it could be a messy situation at Man United. But they've got the new man. They've got Allegri. He signed a three year deal. He's got the foundations of a great team. They've came second in the Premier League, runners up in the Champions League. Ragnick has steadied the ship. Can Allegri continue the good work done by the veteran genius German? Let's simulate a year into the future. I'm just going to see how Allegri gets on in his first year. That's all we're going to look at. Let's simulate that now. Let's see how he gets on. Right, here we are another year into the future. And Max Allegri hasn't done as well as Ralph Ragnick. But it's still been a decent season. Man United have came fourth with 81 points, but there were actually only 9 points behind winners Liverpool. Liverpool making it back-to-back -back title wins. But Man City and Arsenal have jumped above Man United. It looks like it's been a good competitive Premier League season. I mean, still to come 4th with 81 points, only 9 off the title is pretty good. Jadon Sancho's had another excellent year. He's still a star under Allegri. Let's check Man United out. Harry Maguire still the captain. Have they won any trophies? I mean, Allegri won so many trophies at Juventus. He won a Community Shield, which doesn't really count, but that doesn't matter. Club World Championship, they won that early on. That actually might not... Allegri might not have been the manager by then. They might have had a caretaker at that point. So we probably can't give him that trophy. Phil Jones lost his testimonial, which is a little bit devastating. It was a wonderful start of the season for Allegri. He got a 2-2 draw in the opening day against Tottenham. 
Then after that, six wins on the bounce, including a 2-0 win at Stamford Bridge. Cup competitions, they were beaten in the Carabao Cup in the fourth round by Leicester. FA Cup, they were beaten in the fifth round by Leeds United. Pretty devastating. Champions League, looks like they're doing quite well there. They beat Benfica, they beat Real Madrid. They beat Bayern Munich in the semi-final. And for a second year in a row, they lost the Champions League final. Last year, they lost to Man City. This year, they have lost to Liverpool. Even more devastating. A 1-0 defeat in the Champions League final for Max Allegri. He's came fourth in the Premier League and a Champions League runner-up. Let's check the team out. Let's have a look at the goals. Ronaldo, 38 goals. Mason Greenwood, 31 goals. They've actually been playing 4-4-2. They've kept with the same system, which is quite positive. Looks like there hasn't been too many major changes from the Ragnik era. So, they've signed Nicolas Pepe on loan. Why? What a strange season. I mean, he's actually been okay. But what a strange signing on loan. Has anyone else came into the club? Let's have a little look. Mary Demeral arrived, but he hasn't played at all, really. Just six appearances. Nah, no real signings. Sailmakers came into the team, done well. Kai Kai's gone into the youth side, which is fair enough, because he is just a child. Amadiallo not getting as much football, but doing well with what he's getting. But the goals there scored by Mason Green was exceptional. 31, what a tally that is. And what a player he is becoming. It looks like Man United have been just as attacking under Allegri as they were under Ragnik, which is great. It's what you want to see from Man United. Counter-attack and flying football. This should be entertaining, exciting to watch. And that looks like what has happened. But they still haven't won any trophies. Ragnik steadied the ship, came close. Allegri has carried on his good work. Not quite as close but still within a whisker of Champions League glory, which is much better than it was under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, let's be honest. We will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.